Latency testing. How much latency can you detect? This is a much harder question to answer than people realize. And a lot of people use reaction time testing as a proxy for latency sensitivity, and that is completely wrong. A typical response time to a stimulus, like I'm going to change this light from red to green and you're going to press a button. A typical response time might be between, say, 150 to 350 milliseconds, depending on you know who you are as a person, with an average being around 250 milliseconds. And some people say that means that you cannot tell 15 milliseconds latency on your control link can't possibly matter because your, your response time is at 250 and that's so much bigger. That is wrong. No black jungle, no epilepsy warning. This does not have flashing lights. That is categorically wrong because response time and sensitivity to delay are not the same thing. Think about it this way. If you're watching audio, if you're watching a movie on your Bluetooth speakers and the audio is 100 milliseconds late because of the Bluetooth speakers, can you tell? Yup. So we're sensitive to latency in different ways and response time is not a good proxy for latency. Uh, thank you to Ryan Quellet for telling me about this program. Now, hang on, I gotta check this here. I don't know why I can't get a thousand frames per second. I don't know why I'm only hitting 470 frames per second because I have a freaking 3080 graphics card. Maybe it's because I'm streaming and it's using my processor, but I'm gonna demonstrate anyway. So what this does is I'm gonna move my mouse left and right on the table. And when I move my mouse left and right on the table, hang on, I gotta turn off my screen so you can see the results. Uh, when I move my mouse left and right on the table, the line is gonna move left and right. Now, between A and B, one of them has, do you see up in the upper left, lag high is 30 milliseconds? Oh, the upper, the upper left? One of them has 30 milliseconds of lag and one of them has no lag. And it's my job to figure out which it is. And I'm going to do this right now here on the chat. It's, it's, I, technically, if I'm not getting 1,000 frames per second, I have no idea why I'm not getting 1,000 frames per second. I really should be. I'm, conf I'm so confused. This computer should be able to do it. But anyway, technically, if I'm not getting 1,000 frames per second, it's not as uh, precise as it could be. So let's see here. So I find the best thing to do is to just kind of twitch it now, okay, it's B. Boom, got it right. Okay, now that could be just random luck. Let's do a few more. This is tougher. See, I'm going to stress myself out. Okay, I just got to calm down and do it. A, B. I think it's B. Got it right. Okay. It's B again. Got it right. Okay, three in a row. Oof. I'm just stressing myself out because I got three in a row right and I know you guys are, are watching me. I think it's A that time. Four in a row. Got it. B for sure. Got it. A that time. Five in a row. Correct. A. Oh, God, finally got one wrong. Thank God. I'm, I'm so relieved. So, okay. I'm not going to keep going, but for reasons related to statistical significance. Oh, shoot. I wasn't scoring myself. I was in free mode. Damn. For reasons related to statistical significance, if you can get 12 out of 16 right, then you're like 95% likely to have actually been able to tell the difference and it's not just random chance. Okay. And if you get less than 12 out of 16 right, then it's, it's potentially random chance. That's the threshold that they set. Now, check this out. I got to get out of this. Check this out. I put a thread up on my Discord channel having people post their results. Look at this. This guy was able to differentiate 20 milliseconds of lag 15 out of 16 times. Hello. 
15 milliseconds of lag, not quite. He, so his latency threshold is between 15 and 20 milliseconds where he can't tell the difference. Here's somebody, 18 versus 28, 14 out of 16 times. This guy can tell the difference between 18 millisecond HD0 and 28 millisecond uh, analog. Isn't this fascinating? Isn't this freaking fascinating? So it's called Latency Split Test by Aperture Grill. There is a YouTube video about how to use it and how it works and why it works how it works if you're interested. Don't you, you need to get a thousand FPS? If you are if you're not if you're only look at the, see here in the upper right here, I can't point to it with my mouse. In the upper right, you see it says two milliseconds. If that number that's the precision of the test. So if you're not getting a high enough frame rate, then the test is not as precise as it needs to be. With two milliseconds of, of precision, I think it's okay. Um no, my monitor refresh rate is only sixty hertz, but that's it's how much it's delaying. I, I'm not sure how much having a 60 hertz monitor is affecting this, to be honest with you. That's interesting. Uh, regardless, you could play with it. This is fascinating. Because this is showing... Like, I took the test where I flew a drone at 50 hertz and I flew a drone at 250 hertz and I couldn't tell the difference. Now, that was only about 10 milliseconds of latency. But you can use this to dial in your latency threshold in a very controllable, precise, repeatable, scientific way. No bullshit. And if you take this test and you set that to, uh, so let's say, 15 milliseconds versus 25 milliseconds, and you get it right 12 out of 16 times or more, then you could say, I could tell the difference potentially, between analog or, D or HD0 and DJI video latency. But if you take that test, and I haven't actually done this enough to dial in the, the threshold. If you take that test and you can't tell the difference between 20 and 40 milliseconds, right? And most people probably will be able to do that. That's actually easier than you th might think. Then you could just STFU about latency. Uh, I will be doing this. I will be uh, publishing my results and uh, I will be taking this into account in the future when I review products uh, where the latency is relevant. Um, you may notice that a long time ago when I first reviewed DJI cameras, I thought I could feel the difference between 25 milliseconds high, uh, low latency and 35 milliseconds uh, 60 FPS. And I stopped saying that because I started to doubt that that was not just placebo. Well, if I can pass this test, then I could go back to saying I can feel the difference. Anyway, I'll be making a video about it, of course. This is fascinating, and I wanted to share that with you guys. <clears throat> hmm. Um... All right. I, I don't know whether you need to be on a high frame rate monitor for this test to work. Um, because here's... I guess it does seem like a low frame rate monitor. It has to work. If you need... There's no such thing as a 1000 FPS monitor, so it has to work. But I do see that... Oh, no, I know why. Yes, yes, of course. Okay, okay. That's why they use a vertical line down the screen. The vertical line down the screen is designed to compensate for the scan lines of the monitor. Because the vertical line goes across the whole screen, wherever the scan line is in the sort of drawing of the frame when it updates the video buffer, it turns VSync off. That's right, that's why. So no, lower frame rate doesn't affect it. You can do this on a 60 FPS monitor because it turns VSync off. And that's why the line stutters. You, you guys didn't see it as much on the recording. But when you move it, the line sort of skews. Um, yeah, low frame rate doesn't affect the result. That's, that's why they use a vertical line that goes across the whole screen. And they turn VSync off, if that means anything to you. So, anyway. Um, okay. Okay.